Mormon missions, we've all gone on one, except me. Here I am with two, two people who have. Someone else try a different intro. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Zelf on the Shelf, where anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. My name is Tanner. And my name is Sam. And my name is Alyssa. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Special guest. First time using three Sure mics on an HD Feels nasty, production. This it? Is, <laughs> it looks good. It looks sexy. Thank you for coming all the way to here. Yes, thank you. I just got off the flight, having you talk culture yet. shock all over again yeah wow. church Tough. buildings everywhere <laughs> <laughs> can you smell the arsenic in the air <laughs> it's real nice huh do we just jump right in and maybe Alyssa, do you want to give us like a little a little of your background and mostly in the context of leading up to your mission the types of things messaging you're getting about it experiences you're having in relation to it the any preparation europe process. based revelations you may have received <laughs> yeah i uh, so i went i've been mormon my whole life i went to byu Provo and I was there I was in a BYU dorm room when they gave the announcement about the age change oh. and I swear you actually could hear screaming yeah like you could hear girls screaming in the street <laughs> from the other dorm <laughs> like everybody was freaking out and it was very much like who can tap out I will serve a mission as soon as possible on onto Facebook as quickly as possible how um, well did you do at that <laughs> were you straight in there or was it kind so, of a question mark for you I felt like I my I really wanted to go but I um I, I you know I had to first make the decision I was a little on the fence about when I would go and then also womp womp depression you know never declare it <laughs> never declare it so i was naive and i uh went to my bishop and i you know i had actually been already meeting with him about it a little bit he Wait, was about kind of going on a mission about depression oh depression. specifically and he had been counseling me and he actually he referred me to a, Jody <laughs> <laughs> a therapist who ruined my life no she was a fine therapist because he had already, like he kind of already knew when i went and told him i wanted to go on a mission he said sorry your brain is broken and you have to wait until you're cleared by a psychologist which took about nine months um, That's how long it takes to fix a brain in therapy. <laughs> the brain was just nine months. Yeah. Also, for anyone who doesn't have a Mormon background, it basically used to be that Mormon boys would go on missions at 19, right? Mm -hmm. And girls couldn't go until they're 21 because ideally a woman would get married before yeah. then. And it, there was kind of a stigma around women going on missions that was like, girls you're, you're who kind go of on the missions, leftovers. yeah, something's, you weren't that marriable, <laughs> you know? Something's a little bit up with you. Um, yeah. But then they changed it so that girls could go at 19. 19. But then they also changed it so boys could still go at 18. So, they so yeah, the for some reason is still there for the, sure. <laughs> why didn't they just make it the same age for both? I don't know. I think it's because they want they, they want to get rid of that year where uh, boys fall off the map. Because usually they would do, like I did, one year of university before going on my mission. And I think a lot of people like just leave the church in mm. that year. Definitely. <laughs> and so they're like, okay, let's just try to get them straight out of high school. The women, let's give them a year to potentially get married at the ripe old age of 18. Yeah. And then if, you know, if they want to push old widow status to 19, then yeah, okay. It, which is funny. They've never, they've never come out and said why there's an age difference, but everyone But knows. we all know. Yeah. <laughs> it's just inferred. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So I, I was 20 when they changed the rule. So I, mm. I was kind of waiting till I was 21 uh, and then they changed the rule. So I was eligible. Um, and so I, I, I had this very long process of waiting. Meanwhile, every one of my friends was going on a mission and opening their mission calls, which is always a big, you know, party and post fest, you know, they're posting <laughs> online. Um, so I was definitely jealous and I was very impatient. And I was sitting in the temple doing baptisms for the dead, which is a practice where you are baptized in place of the person's soul who has passed not literally baptizing a dead person. Normal Though thing that for people would be over than 12 to do. <laughs> yes. Uh, but it's got to be done in the back of 12 <laughs> oxen, okay? Like, you can't just be doing it anywhere. It's got to be on 12 oxen. Yes, it's a great photo. Um, but as I was waiting, and you're told growing up, the temple is the most, that's the house of the Lord, literally the house of the Lord. And God lives in, you know, temples. And, um, you know, the spirit is so strong there. And people talk about seeing angels and seeing those who have departed and so you know any revelation i was going to get in a temple i felt like was oh, yeah. just super made charged. of gold like mm -hmm. yeah definitely super supercharged revelation so um as i was sitting in the temple i had this very sudden and overpowering feeling that i was going to serve my mission in italy 
and I started to cry and it was such a powerful, you know, feeling in my bosom um, that I was, I, I just was like, I went home and I wrote in my journal, I will go on my mission to Italy and I am as sure as that as I am sure that God lives and Jesus Christ is my savior. And I, you know, I took a pen to paper about that <laughs> because I was so sure. And it was almost like, I, I feel like at the time writing the journal entry, it was like I was proving to God that I trusted mm. the revelation. Yeah, you know, they, they t that's it. how they say it will be, right? Like yeah. you get that strong witness, you're that really powerful speaking it in, you know, You're speaking this revelation and you're saying, you know, I received a witness and now I'm bearing testimony basically. Yes. If it was true when you prayed about it in the temple, it's true now. It felt like one of those moments that they talk about in general conference and stuff and church meetings where it's this overpowering feeling and it wasn't like a whisk, you know, just a slight, you know, it wasn't indigestion. <laughs> it felt really real. It's like, buongiorno. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry, I did that joke. <laughs> That's not. the only Italian word I can think of. <laughs> would have been like, uh, cavatappi. Yeah, there we go. Lasagna. I also just felt like you know, God was giving me this gift because I had been patient to wait and wait for my mission. I hadn't even been, pr I wouldn't, I would never deign to pray to know where I was going to go on my right. mission. It's kind of a spontaneous. God's yeah. Like, it, it, felt, it felt like this like realization me moment of, mm -hmm. you know, revelation. So, um, I went, went home, I wrote it in my journal. I got cleared by the Bishop. I got my mission call. I have like, my little picture holding my mission call and I went on a hike because I wanted to open it, you know, alone and make it all spiritual. I'm, I'm hiking up this mountain like, I don't need, I already know what it's going to say, you know, but this is like fun for me mm -hmm. to have this journey. Up the mountain. It's so poetic. <laughs> Did you tell people like, I'm going to Italy? No, I didn't. Kept it you I did felt it right. like you it was right. so sacred, I, you know, mm -hmm. like a patriarchal blessing or something. I felt like it was such a sacred moment. I didn't tell anyone. I just told my journal, you know. I kind of low key was like, I'm gonna write this in my journal, and then when I get called to Italy, I'm gonna show the journal. Yes, <laughs> beautiful, to people brilliant. And be like, hell yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I opened the mission call, you know. I begin reading, Dear Sister Grenfell, you are hereby called to serve a mission, full time mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. You are assigned to labor in the Denver, Colorado mission. Mm. I think it's pronounced the Denver, <laughs> <laughs> Colorado. <laughs> And I, I just was like, <laughs> I, the Italy of the West. I, mean, I was like, that's not how Italy is spelled. <laughs> Maybe there's a mistake. <laughs> um, I was so disappointed, but I felt like in that moment, I was like, I was wrong. I must've been wrong. You know, like I was, I, after I got over the initial shock of reading and I was hiking down the mountain, by the time I got off, I was just like, I was wrong. You know, I misinterpreted revelation. Who am I to think I could get that sort of revelation from God? You know, oh, I'm man. the idiot for getting an exact experience that they told me to code as a witness of the Holy Ghost that has also held up my testimony of the Book of Mormon, the church and Joseph Smith, etc. It's like, yeah, don't question any of that. How the answer is coming. Just be like, oh, yeah, I must have been the problem for for mistaking the, the uh, unmistakable witness of the Holy Ghost as. You know, and I really so. think this is your fault for skipping that class one time. <laughs> In that school. is, if you had, I've thought about this. If you had been more worthy, probably yeah. would that's have. true. Something happened between that revelation exactly. and getting my mission call. I don't know what I was thinking about, but something we'll was never know. We'll never know. Something dark must have crossed your mind, or this would never have happened. Yeah. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints of plausible deniability always has a reason <laughs> for yes. why you're the problem and, the and not them. Is <laughs> you. And my favorite thing is after I left and I tell people tell members that story, they'll say, "Well, it's because you're supposed to go to Italy." on your senior mission. That's why. Oh, so there's still time. <laughs> so there's still, they're like, stay in a little longer, honey. And yeah. if that mission is in Italy, just do another it's one. It's a mission in the <laughs> yep, afterlife. Exactly. Mm. In You'll Italy. You'll probably go haunt the people of Italy because you're so pissed. You don't get to go in person. <laughs> First of all, did you cry? When did I got my Italy? mission call? No, because it, it was similar to, you know, like the first time I went through the temple to get my endowment where I was, so it was, it's always as a, a member for me, it was so easy to push myself away mm -hmm. and just center whatever the church wanted that I was, I had that muscle down. Like I was so good at just being like, I don't exist. I'm just the church. Like anything I get from the church, you know, I hated the endowment. I was me too. 
icked out yeah. the whole time. Major cringe, guys. You need to switch <laughs> something up. Freemasonry. Different isn't outfit it. taste. <laughs> it ain't it, sis. I the whole time I hated it, and I, you know, when they make you. Sorry, I was just re-listening to your woman's stories this morning. But when they make you go in the prayer circle and you have to do the chant, and I have such a deep visceral cringe to group chanting <laughs> and just having to be doing the like. Mm. Imagine if you were there when you had to pantomime slitting your throat and, and your disemboweling bowels. yourself. And I can't even tongue. show the audience the people chant dressing you naked, blessing I your know, genitals. And they used to say what is it, pale ale or something. So they used to say mm. even cultier stuff. Oh, now yeah. they say, oh god, I hear the word in my mouth. So at least that's like just show, yeah. Okay, at least yeah. we're. Frank. <laughs> at <know>? least. <laughs> Have you harbored any kind of grudge against Italy since that incident? How's you your know, relationship with Italy doing? I'm more in harboring the gri- the uh, grudge. grudge. <laughs> the Grinch. Mm-hmm. I'm more harboring the. G- <laughs> I would love to harbor the Grinch. He was like a fugitive. <laughs> Sorry, we'll derail everything you say. Yeah, this isn't a serious channel. <laughs> um, I'm more harboring a grudge towards the church. I did go to Italy on a trip. Mm. That was my first mm. Euro trip was to Italy. So, you know, I'm walking around and I'm like, yep, this would have been better. <laughs> this could have been me. Mm. You could have had this. I could have been here. having a ton of gelato. Instead, mm. I was in the suburbs of a, a metropolitan area. So, Such yeah. Such a bummer. But you're still, you're faithfully going on your mission. It's not wavering. Yes, I, wavering. I think I just was like, you know, shove it down. It's like that one um, Book of Mormon musical song mm. where they're like, turn it off, turn it off. You know, I feel like, I was so good at that, and I think I just felt like I was wrong. The prophets and apostles who sent me this mission call are obviously right, right. you know. And the so, algorithm that they used to generate the results <laughs> to tell them where everyone goes was obviously inspired by God, obviously. And even the first day at um, MTC, I actually met some missionaries, some sister missionaries going to Italy. Slapped in the face. And I was like, fuck you. <laughs> 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 Paid me tax. <laughs> I'll go you know, in your place. But, and then all while I was in Denver, I think I just, in the back of my mind, had that experience. And I'd have moments on my mission too, where missionaries would, you know, say, you know, I had this really, st- I had several companions on s- with several investigators who were like, I prayed and they're gonna say yes to this baptismal invitation. I got a revelation. And then we'd go and invite them <laughs> to be baptized. And they'd be like, oh, hell no, you know. <laughs> and I'd be like, I'm what? confused how this works. <laughs> it's good to stay delusional, though, I imagine. Yeah, like, yeah. You, know. you have to as a missionary. There's <laughs> yeah. just no other way. Yeah. I got back, and that was kind of, the, you know, the whole mission experience. I was a really good missionary. I was not one of those disobedient missionaries. We had the, the I don't know if you had the slang term, diso. Uh, we had the Portuguese term fubeca, <laughs> which is actually a Mormon specific Portuguese word. Interesting. Interesting. Wow. I- invented yeah. by the Mormon church to be invented for disobedient. Like, yeah, Mormon slang for like a slacker. Damn. Fubeca. I love diso. I'm gonna start calling diso. That. So yeah, I you know, I was a sister training leader. They probably didn't have those. Um they, they made up a new female leadership position after they let girls go sooner. Because uh. Previously, in a mission, there'd be, you know, 150 elders and three, four, five sister missionaries. Right. So they just kind of, like, let them go off and do their own thing. And I don't think they, you know, nobody had to worry about them. But soon it became, like, half of a mission was women. So they basically started making it so that the um, wife of the mission president was essentially, like, the Relief Society mission president over the sister missionaries. We'd still meet with our mission president, but... it was also like if you're calling someone, you're supposed to call it the woman first. Of course. You know, because she has the, the priesthood. So she, just kidding. <laughs> I was like, you better not say that on this channel. No, sir. I'm walking out of here. So once all of these girls started going out, they were kind of like, we need to have uh, a little bit more for them to do, I guess. So they invented sister training leaders, which is the same level, I guess, as a zone leader. So there's district leader, uh, zone leader. AP, assistant, pr- assistant to the president. Those are the male leadership positions, but girls, you're just, you, I guess, yeah, you're basically just a missionary or you're a, in, you're, you're a sister training leader, so. But you don't have the priesthood. No. So it's like <laughs> having a Ferrari, anyway? but not the keys. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit of a pat on the head. But you do get to go to um, the leadership conference that usually it was just zone leaders. Oh. How they nice. do let you go. <laughs> that is a fun time. I love getting to go to a conference. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, it was such a nice relief to doing actual missionary Wait, work. Was it? Yeah, it yeah. was nice. Whenever we had 
meetings, everybody, you know, would be off talking and some flirting and mm. everyone's gossiping and you got a meal catered. Yeah. It was honestly the like the best times of the mission. Yeah. When you could just like meet and, and hang out for just a And they have special um, yeah. guests come. So they have general authorities. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Some like, traveling asshole who's like, <laughs> you're not doing good enough. And you're like, I'm almost killing myself, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a very funny mission meeting story. But it's it's one of those stories that I feel like unless you understand the, the enough doctrine, so you guys can cut it out. Maybe no, do you want me to tell we're it? We're going to tell Please. an insider story now. If this isn't <laughs> anything you understand, this is Cozy a story up. I've Hot never popcorn. told before, just because it requires so much understanding of Mormonism. Got it. Um, but <laughs> lore mongers, <laughs> this is your cue. Time to shine, guys. <laughs> if you're not from around here, you might have to Google some things in order to understand why this story is funny. <laughs> but they'll think it's funny. <laughs> Uh, so on my mission, we had one of these big missionary meetings, all the missionaries, I think there was like 200 of us and a member of the 70 came, which is a big deal. You know, everybody's very excited and his, they always prepare a talk. So he's giving his talk and it's about the 12 tribes of Israel referenced earlier with the 12 oxen that when you baptize the dead are underneath the tub. So, um, he's basically talk, you know, as Mormons, you believe, we believe we're gathering the 12 tribes. So that's why you go out and do missionary work. You're trying to get all the 12 tribes gathered before the second coming. So he's asking everyone to raise their hands, uh, what tribe you're in. So I didn't know you were allowed to sort of say, say that. I wanted yeah. to sell a shirt that said I'm with Ephraim. <laughs> <laughs> I was as well. Cause most people, most, yeah. So most people are Ephraim, are... right? And, and it, that's white people. Like white people are all Ephraim. <laughs> If they literally just if this racially. is your first day of genetics, <laughs> welcome. This is how uh, lineage works. Yes. Yeah. The patriarch literally just looks you up and down, and it's like, like white <laughs> color Ephraim. is your skin. And what is what are like Hispanic people? Are Manassa. Manassa. Or yeah. Or Someone Native should American. do like an Ariana Grande thing where they just go in, you know, kind of as a newcomer and just kind of cosplay as someone not yeah, white and yeah, see what happens. See if they give them. Yeah. I think that's. I don't think you're supposed just to just a free content idea anymore. for the <laughs> new name knowers of you out there. Mine was uh, like you're a Capricorn rising. <laughs> <laughs> I was Ephraim because I'm white, as you might have noticed. Mm-hmm. But in a lesson a few weeks before, we were talking about the twelve tribes with my companion, and I had taught and about the patriarchal blessings, and I said I was from Judah. So accidentally accidentally okay because i forgot because it's not important at all <laughs> and judah is what jesus is from mm-hmm. and judah Read is also jewish people jewish people <laughs> right so <laughs> i don't look jewish right uh so the this general authority is saying raise your hand you know for what tribe you're in so um my companion is like you can tell everyone from judah because apparently it's quite exciting to be ah, from judah totally <laughs> and had you st- were you still you still forgot that you were Ephraim? you were like <laughs> i think at that time i think Full i was send on I think judah I was at this panicking. point <laughs> i think i was panicking in that moment because i was like i don't remember what i am mm. but everyone but everyone had stood up for Ephraim and i didn't oh yeah <laughs> so this ship so you're like sailed. i'm the anglo who is the true <laughs> jew here <laughs> so um yeah so so they're going through you know they say ephraim all the white people stand up they say Man- manasseh all the hispanic people i don't think i don't think there was any black members uh, missionaries on my mission so i think it was just hispanic people stand up um he's going through <laughs> the other ones nobody's standing up and then he says judah and my companion is like pushes me up <laughs> and i stand up. <laughs> And I'm in the front row because that was the type of missionary I was. So I like sheepishly turn around and everybody, there's three missionaries standing up. They all have black curly hair. <laughs> and they're just, they just look, and of I mean, course. you are str- beautiful baby blues, might I say. I mean, you are so Aryan. I, yes, I'm very white, blonde, blue eyed. And uh, I, t- you know, I turn back and I can see, you know, as we're standing, he's like, just so you know, this is the tribe of Jesus Christ. And he begins, he he starts talking about how important this tribe and is. you're like, yes, exactly. Wow. <laughs> Go off king. Exactly. <laughs> While we're still standing. And he gives this like impassioned testimony about Judah and how important Judah is. And I'm just like, I can't sit down. Uh, and then afterwards, for the rest of my mission, <laughs> missionaries would come up to me and say, you're from Judah, right? Because <laughs> they remembered. Um, and then even, and then the general authority came up to me and said, that is so cool. You're from Judah. Ah! <laughs> and of course, as a missionary, 
you know, I knew I had lied. And I literally, I told him, I was like, I'm actually from Ephraim. <gasps> Ah, uh, lied, right? Yes. Well, no, I told I told him I'm from Ephraim. I forgot what tribe I'm from. And he He's looked, like, "That's very Ephraim of you." <laughs> you look classic Ephraim. So disappointed. Aww. He just was like, "Who is the church sending on missions?" <laughs> <laughs> he just looked at me with such disgust, and I was like, "I promise I wasn't lying." For, for cred <laughs> for missionary what an insane like, lie like just like <laughs> i'm feeling like some, getting some attention in this com little conference yeah and to be clear it's not like these people are act like they're dna testing people this oh, is just no. so going old on vibes man, alone yeah. their old man patriarch is looking at the parents because when you get your patriarchal blessing you're with your parents looking at the parents looking at their child who they've created and just saying what's the skin color what's the hair color what's the eye color that's what i'm so mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, the LDS Church is actively trying to fight against <laughs> genetics as a concept, while also it, wanting to own as much of it as it can. Exactly, exactly. Mm. What was the worst wow. thing about your mission, or what was the hardest thing about your mission? Um, I really hated having a companion. Mm. The sight and sound rule <laughs> that was brutal. It is like psychological, and I and I had to live with members distress. all the time. So you probably had your um, own your own apartment. I had to live with. I had to live so with even the less whole personal space. Time. Yes. Will it you, was awful. Will you explain the sight and sound rule? Yeah. So um, if, you know, as, as missionaries, the rule is you have to be in sight and sound the entire year and a half or two years you're on your mission. So just picture, I, I, I don't even think I could handle that now for a day. Yeah. The only times you can be alone is showering and using the restroom. You sleep in the same room in separate beds. Uh, and... You know, even if, you know, we're in a room right now, if you go around the corner, if you're in the same room, but around the corner and I can't see you, I have to stand up and move to be, you know, in sight and sound. So Otherwise the devil could overcome you in that moment and they could just go off and masturbate, just throw <laughs> their soul away. That's yeah. how scary it is out there, folks. I hated it. Cause I was like, I, I'm the one that <coughs> chose to serve a mission. I'm here of my own volition. Why would I, I I'm not here to break the rules. Mm. It's just so much surveillance. So, you know, even like I would, I like to run. So I would want to go with my companion. And like when I was first on my mission, I was like, well, we can go to a track, right? Because then I can go for my run and my companion can do whatever exercise they want to do. And that, even that was against the rules. Because mm. if you have to shout to be in sound, you're too far away. Uh. So, so I wasn't even, even allowed to go on a, like on a, I, I never was able to run basically my whole mission because nobody none of my companions wanted to run because it's not very popular to go running people don't like it mm. so i had one companion who would run with me because she liked to run mm. everyone else wanted to <clears throat> do yoga because uh, exercise you know not yeah. everybody wants to because you have to exercise every day you have to mission. exercise together and you have yeah you have it's part of the rules to kind of well, exercise or at least you're s s supposed to yeah what what did you do <laughs> well we didn't have did you have Bikes, cars, what was your... We had cars. Cars, okay, so oh. we just walked everywhere, so like You're no one wanted to like run in. at all or like do anything <laughs> else yeah. physical yeah. ever because it's like you spend nine hours a day walking. Okay, my freshman uh, year boyfriend at BYU Idaho went on a mission and I was an insane missionary girlfriend, like had the little oh. sticker chart, you know, Beautiful. called to serve. Mm. And I would send him an unhinged amount of packages and an unhinged, <laughs> unhinged types of packages and one time <coughs> I spent like a, probably an insane amount of money for how poor I was at the time on just like one of those like space hopper things that you could, and I was like, you can use it for exercise time. Cause it's just like, you just bounce on it. A pogo <laughs> stick? No, it's like a big bouncy ball. It's oh, kind of like yeah, a big yeah. exercise ball, but with the little. Uh, yeah, I thought yeah, I was yeah, being like sure. a very innovative girlfriend, but I'm like, I guarantee he did not use that once. <laughs> no, that would have been such a nightmare to carry around a mission. Yeah. I guess once it's inflated, can you deflate it? <laughs> You can, but okay, I imagine so it's maybe. quite an ordeal. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, does the missionary handbook even allow for that level too of blowing? Too much bouncing. I, yeah, exactly. Oh my God. Yeah, you're right. Too Didn't much bouncing, too through. much blowing. Yeah. Problem. That will get <laughs> anyone in trouble. With me on the mission. <laughs> yeah. So I hate, I did hate that. The, the sight and sound. And then living with mm. members, it, it meant there's always somebody kind of keeping tabs on mm. you. So like once we uh, had a toilet that would would run you know how toilets run sometimes it wastes water so this toilet that we was in our apartment was like really finicky and would run and anytime that would happen 
they would kind of yell at us. Oh, that's my mom like, energy, big you're, time. <laughs> you're wasting our water. Yeah. We're on a well. <laughs> and that will, just speaking from experience, that will put you on edge so fast. Like that will give you an anxiety disorder. Yeah, just knowing yeah. that like at any moment. Yeah, and, and sometimes, it, usually, uh, often, not to blame my companions, they're not watching this because they're all still Mormon, but often it would be my companions' fault that they would like do something. Like once one of my companions left a garage door open mm -hmm. overnight, and that man reamed us out so hard because he's like, I have thousands of dollars of equipment in that garage. I was like, it was my companion's fault. Mm -hmm. But you're kind of, you know, just punished mm -hmm. as, a, as a unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it, it sucked because it's like you have all day of doing missionary work, but then you go home and the m members are like, you guys are lazy. You're like, oh. you, you left crumbs on the counter no. from when you made your lunch. So it was just kind of claustrophobic. Did you have any companions that you were like besties with? Uh, yeah, I, I had I had a few really close friends, but I don't know, it's it's hard in hindsight to answer that question because they kind of a little bit dropped me after I left the church. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to feel like, you know, after I made, kind of came out on Facebook, I came out of the closet about my lack of a testimony, and then we moved to New York. So it was kind of, maybe I broke up with them. That's probably the story they're telling, mm -hmm. uh, friend breakup, but they, the two girls that I was closest with, they sent me a Facebook message that was just like, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear you're going. Together? No. Oh, <laughs> no, not the double Group Facebook <laughs> message from two girls. Uh, no, separately, but they both were like, my condolences, <clears throat> basically. They just were like, I'm so sorry. And then I responded and then they didn't, it was nothing after that. So mm. I felt like at the time I was really close to them, but it's hard in hindsight knowing, you know, how our mm. friendship played out to feel like it was as close as I thought we were because you'd think, you know, obviously a true friendship is going to last past that, uh, yeah. but it didn't. So I kind of, and most of my companions are still in the church. Really all of my companions are still mm. members of the church. Is that true for you? For some reason, I, I just imagine like most people have left, but I'm How many companions did biased. you have? Oh God, I'd have to think about it. Probably maybe eight or nine. I had like 20, 25. Okay. Yeah, I, I was with people. I was never with someone for, for one transfer. I always mm. was at least with someone for three months. So I, I didn't have very many companions. Nice. So maybe if I was or maybe worse, I on don't the know. side <laughs> of statistics with you, <laughs> I would have more who had left by now. Yeah. I'm and I served for six months less, so... I don't know if any of my actual companions have left. I, I know of people from the mission mm. have left. But. I've always heard that sister missionaries, like they'll talk about how it's it's weird how you can be a 21 or 22 year old woman on a mission and some 19 year old boy ha is like mm. over you. Or 18. Has yeah, or 18. Oh God, yeah, I was because you 22 and I had 18 year olds. Oh, I mean, and that is quite, <laughs> an 18 year old boy versus a 22 year old woman is, that's a big jump. <laughs> And at that point, you know, before I served my mission, <coughs> I had been going to college. I'd been there for two years. <coughs> Excuse me. And they like just <coughs> left their parents' house. Um, yeah, so I, you know, I lived by myself for a couple years. I grocery shop, I paid my rent. I like, I, mm. I was like, I'm a fully formed adult, you know? And then I go on a mission and they give you all these rules and they treat you like a child. And then they give you an 18 year old boy who's like, sister, grandfather, are you, you know? And you're like, Sorry, what? <laughs> what did you just say to me? <laughs> Is this the what best <laughs> system we have? Because I think I know more than you, objectively speaking, from a years on earth point of view. But uh, yeah, I definitely had leader. You know, I never had guys who were super rude to me, though, or like condescending. I never had a guy just be like, well, I'm a man and you're not. <laughs> That's just kind of the water you're swimming in there. Right. Like, I, yeah. I think of like the ways I, I was you know, good friends with all the sisters and most everybody in the mission. But uh, I, I can still think back on some of the things that I did and said as like very dismissive of the sisters just because that was the way How that it was. How many sisters were there for you? Oh, there was probably like six sets of sisters. <laughs> okay, six sets. Yeah. Love a good set of sisters. A, dozen, a baker's dozen, <laughs> a sister's dozen. <laughs> That's more though than I would think would be in the average mission. Yeah, there was a from what I that's the rumor I've heard at least from pre age change. So you had women. We had women, yeah. <laughs> and when they had uh, menstrual issues, we did not take them seriously. Really? So this oh, is damn. my official apology to women everywhere. Like yeah, that was that was one off. thing that girls got really upset with because you get it's called an MSF card, missionary supply fund, I guess. That's what it stands for. 
that's like your your little allowance because you're paying each month to serve a mission, right? Yeah. I think I paid five or six hundred dollars. Now I think it's four hundred. So you're you're paying to do eighty hours of labor a week, <laughs> and then you get guess how much you get on your card though? A week. Is it a, a month pittance. by month? Is it for food or just? For <laughs> I'm curious how much you got. Food and transportation. I don't even remember uh, exactly how much it was. And probably it different in the states, anyway. but two hundred. Oh. Yeah, it was a hundred dollars. Wait for food <laughs> for a month. Wait, <laughs> food for a month. Yeah, so we so it they expect insane. the I, they expect the members to feed you. Tampons yeah. are like twenty dollars a box. I swear. <laughs> so the the elders and the sisters got the same amount. Oh uh, yeah. And so the sisters were like, girls have actually more expenses, like makeup. Oh yeah, and you're supposed expense. to wear makeup. Really, you're, you know, you? you're supposed to look nice. Obviously, tampons, pads, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But then they'd be like, well, the sisters get fed more, which was true. Oh. So, the therefore. <laughs> but it was always pizza. So, you know, it, another big complaint from the sisters is like, it was, vi you, I gained a ton of weight on my mission. Lots of sisters gained a ton of weight because you don't have a lot of control over your diet when mm. members are feeding you and you only have $100 a <clears> month. <throat> but then because people are feeding the missionaries, they kind of want to do it on the cheap because... Right. Often it's young families. Often, I mean, they are already giving fast offering, tithing so much to the church, you know. So we have, you know, Papa John's pizza every night, which we were mm. grateful for. Don't get me wrong, because they're still feeding us. But it just means you don't have a lot of control over your diet. So you're just kind of eating, yeah. you know, whatever comes across your plate. It's just one other way, like you're kind of out of control. And also you, you're told you represent the church, you represent the Savior. Mm. So if you go and you're like, I don't want to... I don't want to eat this. This isn't food I like. Or if you just don't finish your plate, oh, you know, yeah. you, there's a lot of rules around. And like we went <laughs> the first um, day at the mission, we had this whole presentation about how to dine with members and how to be polite and how to use, you know, utensils. It's kind of like an old school, you know, manners etiquette class etiquette. Whatever, etiquette yeah. yeah. And they expressly said, you know, finish your plate. If they offer seconds, graciously accept more. Mm. That's one way to show that you're grateful and that you're, you know, the savior would take a second plate of pizza. <laughs> the savior oh, would he slam took so that much for slice. us, <laughs> and he would take yet another slice for us. The cops he would consume for us. <laughs> That's why he's like, I'm literally bread at this point. My body is bread. <laughs> I'm just bread and wine now. <laughs> Jesus crust. Crust. That's good. It's not. <laughs> I, that was that that was tough living and then so the other crazy story about living with members is we lived with this couple who would argue a lot and at the time of my mission my parents were getting divorced and kind of a lot of my depression had come from this like d divorce situation so it was you know it's kind of traumatic to have oh. loud arguing every night you, you know. had come from that Cause yeah, cause I'd come from that. Mm. I knew my parents were in the process of getting divorced, and that just also like to be going to bed every night, yeah. listening to strangers argue, dysregulating, who are yeah. also telling you not to leave crumbs on the ta counter. You know, <laughs> it's just there's a lot to deal with. Yeah. So and contention is of the devil. Contention and you is of really got to stay away from the devil and the mish. And I was just trying to consecrate my mind and body and soul. So mm -hmm. I told my mission president, and I said, "We're our living situation is a little rough <clears> because they they're arguing a lot." And he, you know, I really trusted him to mm. help me. To just, like, I thought, you know, find a new family, move us over there, problem solved, right? That's, that's in my idiotic mind what I thought he would do. A week passes, nothing. And we get home, and the couple that we lived with sat, sat us down, and they said, our bishop called us in <laughs> and told us, that you snitched to your mission <laughs> president that we've been arguing and our bishop wanted to give us fucking marriage counseling. <laughs> and so now you've made us look bad in front of our bishop. Heaven forbid. <laughs> and, you know, basically this is inexcusable. This is, you know, we've welcomed you into our home at the, you know, out of the goodness of our own hearts. And they're just like, you know, in the same way I got yelled at for the garage, now I'm getting yelled at for no. 
uh, sharing marital drama to my mission president. Oh. So like, I'm it, 22. <laughs> I really thought my mission president would help me, and instead mm -hmm. he just. Oof. And you had to keep living there. Yeah, we, we lived there for three more months. Like I lived there for three more months. Oh. So it's weird. Oh God, it was the worst. Well, do you want to show us some of your prized possessions yeah. from the mission? <laughs> and I don't, you know, some people when I post these things, they're like, "Why haven't you gotten rid of this yet?" And I'm like, "Maybe it's like Stockholm syndrome. I don't know, because." Part of it is just like I. This is something I really lived through, so maybe I'm just trying to grasp it. Like, and this is your job. Past. I mean, you can't get rid of this. Yeah. Well, I. You know, I, it was maybe six years in between when I started making content and carrying the stuff around. But this is my white handbook, no longer white, which um, is this is the missionary rule book. They've updated it some. Most of the rules are the same. So can I, I've never actually yeah, looked at one of these Sorry, ever in my life. It's been handled quite a bit. So you're required to read, <clears throat> at least in my mission, I don't know for you, three pages of it a day. So you, by and and you can see, see those check marks? That's how many times mm. I read this. Whoa, that looks like yeah. a prison etchings on a wall. <laughs> <I know. laughs> that is how it comes across. <laughs> You've uh, written in the margins, no gossip in no all gossip. caps. Didn't um, win on that one. <laughs> I enjoy Never be alone with, flirt with, or associate in any other inappropriate way with anyone of the opposite sex. Do not telephone, write, email, or accept calls or letters from anyone of the opposite sex living within or near mission boundaries. And then you've also put or make out or, or hug. hug. Just in case. <laughs> Just before you had been clarifying. I know my notes are kind of funny. I'm going to add this one for myself because. <laughs> yeah. This originally looks like it said skirts should reach the knee but you've crossed it out and wrote a little past the knee can you I, explain that <laughs> i honestly don't remember why i wrote that um you know i have a lot of notes in here but i usually so what would happen is whether in the mtc with the missionary training center where you're, you're taught how to be a missionary or in in the field in when you're on your mission they give you um, updates <clears throat> to the missionary handbook. So you'll be reading it in a zone conference because you read it as part of zone conference too or at district district meeting um, and they'll update it for you. So the reason I probably wrote that is because in a sisters meeting, they probably said, all, all right, sisters, turn to page whatever, 382, mm -hmm. there's not that many pages, turn to page 87. And right now it says skirts need to go to the knee. I need you to write a little below the knee. <laughs> because we're changing the rule. Uh, so been like, but this was inspired by the brethren. I know, well the brethren don't know about past the knee, to the knee, below the knee, I guess, apparently. You've also written, do not tarry. No tarrying. <laughs> or if there's any tarriers out there, <laughs> so help me God. The sin of tarrying. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to linger. The, yeah. it, we'll get be separated between the wheat and the tarriers, right? <laughs> be careful never to look like a Taurus. As yes, they just sent that these was white <laughs> people to, in like fucking suits and ties. Oh, trust me, I did not give off the vibe that I was trying to learn and appreciate the local uh, environment and or culture. Or like, no party and drink or yeah, something. Yeah, no. Have a, have a good time being a tourist. Yeah, they tell you not to take a lot of pictures. I think that's probably part of um, that. Yeah. Is you're not supposed to be snapping photos because it gives missionaries like spy vibes too. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> These guys in like shirts, black, black, you know, suits or whatever. No pictures. chewing gum. No chewing gum. I forgot about that. Uh, so no important. gum for a year and a half. So I important. guess my teeth probably benefited <clears throat> from that. This says you've underlined you should communicate with family and friends only on preparation day. You're one day off a week. And then your note is dip your toe in, but stay a missionary the whole time. Dip your toe oh, into communicating yes. with family and friends. And that's how Peter was too. It was supposed to be like, your slight day, your because P day isn't even the whole day. A P day is the preparation Do day, laundry. the few <laughs> hours on usually Monday. I know some missions have other days. Where you just have you a few hours to not do missionary work. You still read the scriptures, you still follow the morning schedule, and then after dinner you're still supposed to proselyte. So even your one day off is actually seven hours. <laughs> and one of those hours is lunch, you know. Well, people who think the like malaise that sets over you on Sunday night anticipating <laughs> Monday have no <laughs> idea uh. what it's like to be finishing up P-Day, staring down the barrel oh, of going back and working at night. Days. Like, oh, oh God, that's it true. Is yeah. So terrifying. Can we just go through the daily schedule? That, yes. Because some and I people... will say uh, the schedule is basically the same. Yeah. I've, when I've done research for other videos, um, they've widened it a tiny bit, um, but as far as hours worked, it's exactly the same. Okay. They, you know, anyways, go ahead. <laughs> 
Mm. So 6.30 a.m., you have to wake up. And from what I know, that's not really negotiable. 6.31 is is already pushing it, right? Yeah, you do not love God so much if you're sleeping in. Would you ever sleep in? I never slept in. Did Once. you sleep in ever? Nope, never. We always not even on sick days. On this I'm proud of you. <laughs> we babe. so we took waking up at six thirty so seriously, and people talk. You know, when you're in these co- meetings and these conferences, they talk a lot about how six thirty is so so important. so important. And so I we would do we would have a alarm clock that was you know a physical alarm clock. And then I brought an alarm clock because missionary rep- apartments, at least for me, were required to have an alarm clock. So I would have my own standalone alarm clock with batteries. There would be a plugged in alarm clock and then we'd have the phone alarm. So we would set three alarms every night yeah. to ensure that if one of them didn't work, we'd still wake up on time. So we never. And no snoozing. So at 6.30, arise, pray, exercise for 30 minutes and prepare for the day. <clears throat> 7.30, breakfast. 8 o'clock, personal study. The Book of Mormon, other scriptures, missionary library, and preach my gospel. Emphasize the doctrines of the missionary lessons. And they're pretty strict about that, at least on my mission. It was like, that's the canon. You're not allowed to read anything outside of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. so an example of disobedience for my husband's mission is they would, he was in Sweden, he was learning Swedish. He didn't tell them he had mental health, well, he also didn't have mental health issues, mm-hmm. but uh, so they would read Harry Potter in Swedish mm-hmm. for le- to um, try and learn. language study. Uh-huh. Because it's very interesting to read and more more fun than the Book of Mormon. Probably um, hard to learn a language through like fucking Mormon scriptures. Yeah, yeah you learn like really formal yeah. tenses. And, and do they they give you a language book, right? Like separate, or you have? Yeah, I think we had a language. So book, I think yeah. you you know you have a few other resources, but yeah, that so that was you know six thirty one disobedient reading Harry Potter in foreign language disobedient to learn the language so you can talk to yes the yes even if it's because you're trying to be yeah. a better missionary yeah you'd learn faster so eight to nine you've done personal study nine to ten you're doing companion study which is where you share what you have learned during personal study with your companion prepare to teach practice teaching study ta- chapters and preach my gospel and confirm plans for the day then 10 to 9 p.m is proselytizing <laughs> it's just that's a big block, right? 10 to 9 p.m. And by the way, there is an extension period. You can go till 10 <laughs> if if you need to, <sighs> and you often needed to. Well, probably especially for you, because in America, people are asleep. But I'm guessing Brazil has like a later culture. Maybe. Staying oh, up later, would you say? Maybe. Like, would people actually be available? I don't. I never people, stayed well, that's, up. Well, that's the thing is like, we were just dicks all the time and people were just like so ni- that people are okay. so nice there that they're just like oh sure come into my house we're, we're just going to bed but yeah i'll wake my kids oh up and you're like gosh. you're like yes yes this is very important get them <laughs> out of bed yes now we're gonna flush all your coffee down the toilet oh <laughs> like, <my God. laughs> okay so don't worry guys you are allowed to take um hour an hour for lunch and an hour for dinner not in my mission we had two hours for lunch and then no, no hours what? for dinner what and what you- what are you, are you just eating two meals a day Sometimes yep. one, right? Yeah, sometimes just one and sometimes none. Jeez. Yeah. Tom Brutal. A hungry missionary. Why did they make we you do two, uh, two hours of lunch? I think they were like, you know, it's really hot. You could probably pass out and <laughs> die if you'd work that much. Just like rest a little bit, okay. eat lunch, have a little rest. Did but you enjoy but you weren't spo- But you weren't supposed <laughs> to nap. That was the other thing, too. You weren't supposed to fall asleep. So it would just be like, you're like, like the verge and resting your eyes. You're just like constantly just like, what would you do for two hours? Eat, go to a member's house, mm-hmm. eat, share a message, book it back home. We weren't allowed to use toilets outside of our house and the church. Wait, you weren't Why allowed not? to use members toilets when you visited the homes? For number two. So you have oh. like, you know. Is that mission rule? They expressly told Wait. you not to poop at me. Oh, yep. your mission. Yeah, That's mission. yeah no, no, I didn't have that rule. Okay. Yeah. They That's probably don't. So they didn't want missionaries women. going up and fouling up people's houses, which That's is honestly, honestly valid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. And sometimes if you gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah. What, what do you have to walk yeah. back to the church building? Imagine some people have had some really sin. shameful walks back to the church building. Yeah. I got really close. Never actually oh. did any real damage, but I got so really, sorry. really close. Jeez. Like, how would they know? I mean, that is uh, honestly, that's kind of crazy that they're restricting your ability yeah. to use the restroom as an obedience level. Because keep in mind, this is not like you're like, it's not ideal if you poop in someone's house. I was going to say, this it would make like sense if they were like, kind a of mission avoid rule. It. This is a direction from God. Oh, and that was the least crazy one. That's probably why people are <laughs> pooping themselves. Imagine, like, that's <laughs> the one that I'm like, I kind of agree with. <laughs> yeah. I'm just imagining a missionary having to confess that, though. <laughs> like, I broke the president. Or praying at night. And by the way, uh, similar to the 
waking up thing, like leaving the house on time was really mm. important. I had a companion Ten. who we left two minutes late. And so as we're praying to leave, he was like, please forgive us oh. for leaving two minutes late. Please don't withhold any like Bless conversions you. on our beat because of our wickedness. And it was like, awesome. I was, I was in the back. Come on. <laughs> like. Passive aggressive. Like, because Damn. You, yeah, there's Aww. a lot of like passive aggressive stuff between companions. Mm. Like, you were oh, disobedient or like, you did, you know, but you can't really fight. I mean, you need You're to pray train. fighting. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> You're pray fighting. yeah. <laughs> Dear God, the please forgive my companion for being a fucking <laughs> dick. <laughs> okay, 9 p.m. you return to living quarters unless teaching a lesson, then return at 9.30 and plan the next day's activities for 30 minutes. Write in your journal, prepare for bed, pray. And then at 10.30, you go to bed. Not a second for yourself. Oh, did you? Second. Here's my question. Did you celebrate New Year's? Um, Not like formally, but... Brazil celebrates up? New Year's, so did we were guys, awake like, for it. You woke up. Okay. It was fireworks. Everyone like banging pots and pans. Did you wake up because it. it was noisy, or did you tell, like did you and your companion kind of? I think we plan? probably stayed up and watched some fireworks. Okay, okay. I bet we did. Or or got up when it's went nuts. Yes. You got some personality in this, you know. I tried. Yeah, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> What's the naughtiest thing you did on your mission? Oh God, I was such a squeaky clean missionary. Maybe you go first, and I'll try to think. Okay, well, one time when I was an, when I was an assistant, <laughs> which is, you know, the That's highest the position level. you can be as a missionary. As we keep saying I on this channel. As, as we keep reminding you, just so you know, <laughs> just so credentials. You, know, tell us <laughs> you can check it on my LinkedIn, <laughs> Eagle Scout AP. Uh, we, one night, we played hide and seek, like, in the office really Aww. late. And it felt, it like, so just kind of cute and naughty because it was, like, we even went and like hid in the what president's time? office before ten thirty or after ten thirty. It must have been after hours <gasps> for sure. The office was a little. It was the most fun I had in the mission for sure. That's, so, <laughs> that's actually such a sweet story. I'm glad you did. So wholesome and so wholesome. Like I had to get something out. My, that that's the hold a Mormon mission has on your mind. That mm. that's the most that you call that disobedient. Like yeah, yeah right. That's like <laughs> young people having wholesome fun. I know. And yet I bet you felt so bad. <laughs> I, I was at the point where I was like so ready to be home, I think, that I was just okay, like, okay, uh, like good. who cares? And also when I'm I was in the, the when, I was in the, when I was in the mission when I was in the office we broke the mission record for most baptisms. Oh. And I want to say I was partly and partly due to my, you know, hounding like I was calling every single missionary in the mission like I'm, maybe that's an exaggeration, but like way more than I was supposed to just like checking numbers. And we had like you probably giving guy, people panic attacks left and right. And when I left, I was like, amazing I've that seen that works. it really like, like if you put your mind. That's why Mormons become and, so good at sales because yeah. they're like ready to push, you know, yeah. they will push. And if you push, you can do it. And you can Summer push sales. for a lot of things. And turns out uh, it's just not one of them that I want to be pushing. Anyway, that was kind of that was naughty. I'm trying to think if we ever did anything else really evil like. We were so repressed. I wasn't even allowed to celebrate my birthday. Couldn't even go to the Aww. zoo. Yeah, you're not really <laughs> supposed to celebrate your birthday. Really? Yeah. Jehovah's it's Witness energy. You, <laughs> you can kind of tell. I th on my I had two birthdays in the mission, and my com like we still had a cake. So it was definitely like I st we we would go to our favorite member's house, and the members would have a cake. This mm. this was kind of this was pretty common in my yeah, mission. Yeah, yeah. So they'd have like a that. cake. We'd sing Happy Birthday, blow out the candles, but otherwise like. That was like our five minutes of <clears throat> this is my birthday. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because to take five minutes of glory away from Christ. Yourself, you'll have the rest of your life to have birthdays, okay? Yeah, you only yeah. get so two years, 24 hours a day <laughs> to knock doors for the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the most, did you do anything rebellious? Can you think of anything? So I did, your, your story helped me remember. There was a day that I was feeling really sad. And um, I think it was because of the whole divorce situation. And I was really upset and I was trying to push it, you know, push it down, push it down, push it down. And my companion, who was really sweet, she was like, let's stop proselyting and go to Sonic and get Sonic drinks. <sighs> Again, so wholesome. So wholesome. So wholesome. And I, if my companion had said that to me, I would have just like become crestfallen. And been like, <laughs> Elder, you know we're not supposed we're not to. Supposed to do that. <laughs> so being silently, so being at just Yeah, because every minute is dedicated to the Lord. So she But I would have wanted it so I know, bad. It was so sweet. And the whole you know, the whole time I was like I was feel I was like, we probably shouldn't be doing this. I feel so guilty. Aww. But she was like, I just feel like you need to take a minute for yourself. And so we went and got I got, you know, my favorite is the purple slushy with the nerds in it so i got my favorite little slushy and we sat there probably for 30 minutes 
Aww. and drank our slushies mm. and then we b- went back to fucking work but did you find god in that sonic that day <laughs> or were you like i fucked up <laughs> no, no i feel like i i think she kind of convinced me that that's what god would want yeah. me to do he would i was yeah. he really manipulated would. into it uh-huh. <laughs> into being disobedient yeah. and it's probably the same where you were like i've worked really hard i've had all these baptisms you know so i think i don't think i felt a supreme amount of guilt Good. My most guilt. Well, I did watch a movie on my mission. That's probably oh, my, yeah. my actual. It was it was a Christmas Carol, which is a <laughs> Christian. That's a Christian. I just sneak it like a <laughs> addict. To- it was Christmas Day. Oh. We watched Christmas Carol. Was it with a member? Mm-hmm. Is that mm. not allowed if you're with a member uh-uh. and it's a wholesome no, movie? No, not nope. even. No, nope. I thought you were allowed to watch like a Disney thing or something if it was no, with a member. Well, Sometimes they're like at big mission gatherings where they have all the missionaries together, like on on Christmas. Like we, I think maybe watch Toy Story two or something. I did feel really like bad Bud's about the life. Christmas Carol. Though. That was my most guilty <laughs> disobedient thing. Because <laughs> and they really guilted us into it because they're like, it's Christmas Day. The yeah, kids, we promised the polite. kids. Yeah. And I, you know, <sighs> I think they kind of were like win for us because we got the missionaries to watch a movie. Uh, I think they were like they thought it was funny that we were so squeamish about it. I mean, it, you're but supposed to accept like second ser- servings of food even if you don't want it. So I'm like. Isn't that kind of the same thing? Yeah, it's kind a of Christmas being pressured. Carol. A Christmas carol on, on Jesus' Christmas day. actual literal birthday. He's from Judah. I mean, <laughs> come on, you're from Judah. Judah girls got to stick together. <laughs> the spirit of Judah was with me. <laughs> Did you ever have any like danger? I was always in pretty safe areas. I, you know, I feel like sometimes we'd have people yell at us. We, we went proselyting um, in this one area in a trailer park quite a bit. And we'd have people give us the weirdest looks because you know you're you're supposed to be pretty dressed up, mm. um, and I feel like I feel like mostly it was concerned looks of people being like, "What are two young girls dressed like that doing right here right now? Like you clearly don't belong here. This is." I think it was more of like a place of concern. They're like, "For you, why are mm. you here? Mm. That you guys are gonna get." You know, this is Denver, all right, <laughs> not Italy. <laughs> Things are scary here. Um, but I never, you know, I never had anything too scary. I would say, yeah. yeah. Did you in Brazil? I assume maybe. Yeah, you a were, few scary things. Yeah. Gunshots. Yeah, I never um, heard of gunshot. Fell gunshot. into a sewer <laughs> at one point. Was there like poop in the sewer? Uh, who God and knows. You? There's just it was a sewer. So well, how do you fall into? A- well, we were like walking, trying to cross the street. Like I think we. Hit, might have had bags like coming from a grocery store. It was a place we weren't usually, and we were waiting to cross this like busy freeway. And we started going, and they were like, ooh, better not. Cars are coming too fast. And on the coming back, I stepped into the gutter that I had previously stepped Ooh. over. And it was just like an open Wait, hole. Wait, and the gutter is a sewer? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Just like an open hole, like <gasps> here deep. So I just fell down, oh. scraped my arm all the way down. Oh and then my, my companions gosh. were like, Elder, Elder. <laughs> 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 like, that sounds uh, terrifying. Yeah, well, and I'm glad you, it wasn't deeper yeah. though, so you <laughs> didn't like you didn't go head under. No, 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 no. <laughs> Just did you? you, did, you get to, did you go home? home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a day or two later, the mission president's wife put some iodine on it. Jeez. Yeah, so. the healthcare on a mission is very interesting <sighs> because <sighs> you're so discouraged from seeking medical care. Like yep. heavy, they have. They have meetings discouraging you from seeking medical care. No, liter- like, literally. I know that sounds insane, That's but they like the actually United Kingdom. explicitly <laughs> tell you, don't seek medical care. It was like, this is the Lord's money. You don't want to be wasting it, going to hospitals and jacking up those bills. I know that you're paying for this, but that's not really what it's about. No, we were the same thing. It was like, just drink uh, coconut water. We had this joke that was like, oh, oh you got God. a headache? Drink coconut water. You got an earache? Drink coconut water. You got hit by a car? Drink coconut water. <laughs> I had a friend, I, don't, I forget, where, he served his mission in Texas, actually, and he got in a bike accident, and he was fully like bleeding, like bleeding s- s- onto the ground, like blood coming out of a wo- empty gaping wound. And they they didn't know what to do. So they called the mission president's wife because that's what you're supposed to do. You, b- they didn't call 911. And they sat there because she didn't answer the phone for like two or three hours where he's just, he's like bleeding, <gasps> bleeding, bleeding. And like he started to basically feel faint. Oh my God. And it was also like a little bit in the ball region. It was like, you know, up the leg into the ball region. So finally they were like, we have to go to a hospital. So they took him to a hospital and he got stitches. Oh my God. And 
like uh, the next day the mission president's wife calls them back because they have a lot of they're fielding a lot of calls mm. and i think they're just not working as much as missionaries are yeah. so they you know <laughs> half the time when we would call when we were sick they wouldn't answer mm. uh -huh. so you're calling and you're like i need to go to the urgent care or something and they just don't answer and you're like i guess i can't you're not gonna go without permission it shows you know? a level of brainwashing though that you can just be bleeding out on the street for two hours yeah. you're like i better just wait for this nurse president lady to yeah, yeah who's not a nurse <laughs> no, just a woman <laughs> she's only received like for a few woman. hours of a video of medical training I swear. Yeah. <laughs> which the video is probably just tell the missionary not to do anything <laughs> okay oh. i have a question what's the this is maybe a tough one to answer, but what's the most like excessively obedient or like brainwashed thing you did on your mission? Other than just kind of all of it. <laughs> I just remembered another naughty thing, which was prank calling a missionary <laughs> from the office. But <laughs> <laughs> one time I had to go be like a disciplinarian, like that we heard rumors that a missionary had kissed a <gasps> local girl. So we drove into mm. town to figure, get to the bottom of it. And we went and we like, we're like inter interrogating all the these wall. teenagers like did he tell you like <laughs> it was like the weirdest like gossipy like just a, a huge mountain out of a molehill and then come to find out that the missionary had like a cell phone and so we busted him and he ended oh. up going home and i just like look back on that kind of situation it's like that was just like the guilt that we heaped on a person mm. for just trying to like claim some semblance of individuality, some sense of like connection with the outside world with another person is, and for us to just be like so hoity toity about it, like is just sad yeah, to like me now. You are pure evil for consensually kissing yeah, someone like of age. You, have, <laughs> you would think having the Don't having a companion sense. was the original couple's ruse, right? It's <laughs> yeah. like, sorry, I can't make out with you. I have my companion here. <laughs> I love when it's funny that Mormons just show up and, and like the language sometimes it's a different word, but they'll be like my companion or my partner. Yes. And people are like, oh, oh. <laughs> these two twinks showed up my door. They're life partners. They have some kind of message. For us. <laughs> yeah, we would get we would get a lot of lesbian jokes. I will say, especially knocking doors, people would be like, so do you two ever, you know, and we'd be like, sorry, what? <laughs> like, most of the time, totally go for our head. And then sometimes obviously be inappropriate enough that we'd be like, uh -huh, no, we're, you know, we're leaving. But um. <laughs> Jared, come and tell us the most bad boy thing you did on your mission. Jared was AP as well. Mm -hmm. We only associate with the best of the best around. I was just Cream of the crop out here. All wheat, no All terriers. <laughs> the worst thing I did on my mission was I had a wet dream. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> But you hadn't, I, I you hadn't uh, guilted it. yourself out of those by then? I chose to do it, and but I learned my lesson because <laughs> the shame. I thought the point of a wet dream is that you don't choose to do it. Well, this you, one I did choose. I, was, <laughs> I planned it. It was premeditated. <laughs> I was like, I need something. Like, How do you is, plan it? Take some me melatonin or magnesium. Are you magnesium lucid dreaming? What's the you? Yeah, you 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 know you start by chilling out. You do some manifesting. You light some candles, <laughs> um, and then was this as AP? I would have never done that. <laughs> I repented after that, and that's why they made me AP. So <laughs> I, I corrected the error of my ways, and I didn't baptize Are you one of those people, missionaries so. who could be like, I've been to the dark side, and then I can't. You know the pastors who are like, you know. I feel like when people are like, I used to sin. And now I don't anymore. Yeah. Maybe that was, yeah, um, I have I've seen how the world is. And now I've chosen the good side. It's like more exciting, more, you know, faithful. I couldn't say that I was a bad boy. I was perfect the whole time. I was probably the best missionary to ever <laughs> walk the face of the earth. I'm dead serious. Like, I was like. You just said you had a wet dream. Yeah, yeah Jerry. Sorry. <laughs> well, it's. Choose a lane. You know, even Adam and Eve messed up. They ate an apple. <laughs> they, they were, were never Mormon to. missionaries. Therefore, so. and well, I mean, they kind of started the whole thing. So it's That's like, true. if that was like my wet dream apple that I ate, <laughs> and I knew true. I wasn't supposed to, but like, I just had to live a little bit, take the edge off. Well, yours beats ours. I mean. yeah. <laughs> Can I be done now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show this to my mom. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your wet dream story publicly for. That Hundreds of thousands of years. Yeah, Jared, for coming out about your wet Hashtag dream story. Brave. That's being used against you in the court of law. What other books do you have here? We went through the handbook. Oh, okay. can we read a journal entry? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. So I, I just grabbed, I have, you're supposed to journal every day. So I have maybe, this 30. is one of, one of, I think, I don't know. I probably have seven or eight journals for my mission. I also enjoyed writing. And yeah. it was, it's the same journal entry uh, over and over. It's like, I love Jesus. Next day. Um, Have I told you I love Jesus? Next day. I love Jesus still. I'm uh, trying so to be more worthy somehow. I, I've never read these. Uh, 
since I've been home because it's kind of impossible to get through. Right. But um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know. I, I do have, that's one of my companions. Are you, oh. And I, you know. Aw. I have a little drawing of a, a unicorn saying Colorado is a wonderful place. Can you show just that? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, cover, I'll cover my companions. Are you brave so. enough to like just open a random page and read yeah, an sure. entry? Yeah, sure. Roulette? Okay. Yeah. Journal roulette? Um, like I said, it's not going to be spicy or interesting, so... Yeah. Just give us a little taste, though. Here, why don't you open it for me? I would love to. Mm-hmm. Do an honor. Okay. Oh, oh okay. okay. So it's a little long, so I'll just read till we get bored. Here, I have a note from Bethany. I don't remember who that is. Thank you for your shining example. You are a joy to talk to. Have a wonderful week. So true. Uh, I don't remember who. Hope that she's was. doing well. Thanks, Bethany. Okay, so I have in this random, uh, I have a baptismal program. That means somebody got baptized. Whee! Uh, so that was uh, so. This, this might this might be an exciting uh, journal. This or yeah, entry. Saturdays are always weird. I think it's probably because we never really have service or meetings or anything, and people never seem to want to schedule appointments. <laughs> Frowny face. Oh, it's pretty sad. And like what are you supposed to do with yourself? Yeah, you're still supposed to proselyte. Um, haha. So sorry, I have crazy cursive. Haha. So it leads to a lot of tracting ish kind of activities, and you spend a lot of time aimlessly driving around. Sorry, reader. Sometimes my journal must be frightfully boring. Little did I know, someday. (laughs) (laughs) Journal is us. Yeah. You just thought you were writing to be quoted by the angels in eternity, but it was for for YouTube. For my future children. Sister B got baptized. She is so-and-so's mom, and it was a beautiful baptism. I'm still not sure why she asked me to participate in the musical number, (laughs) only because all the other sisters that saying uh, hardcore taught her and I only taught her on exchanges. So that's kind of- She must've liked you. Yeah, like missionary culture, it's very special if someone asks you to participate in the baptism. I'm sure, you know, if someone asks you to baptize them as a man, that is, that is One like- the greatest honors a man can have. <laughs> it's a great <laughs> honor. So like, you know, if, if a woman, if someone is taught by two elders, they'll usually choose one of the two elders to baptize them. So it's kind of like a favorites game. Same with here, what I'm talking about with the musical number. So she's choosing who's going to sing at her baptism. And I'm kind of, I guess, honored that she chose me to sing in the musical number, even though I only taught her a few times. So. Slay. Slay. (laughs) I love the the B family. It's so, (laughs) the bitch family, (laughs) just kidding. I love the B family. It's not, um, it's so cool to me that, um, okay, it's so cool to me that all of them have slowly gotten baptized over the period over uh, of the last year, smiley face. They are a miracle family. Yay. Sister companion also got all sad again today. Wow. <laughs> okay. I think she gets frustrated because everyone was talking to me during the baptism. <laughs> wow, look at this bragging. Being like, oh, Sister G, we love you. <laughs> it's not your fault you're so popular. Yeah, <laughs> it's just hard to be so cool. <laughs> so embarrassed I wrote this in my journal. Uh, so she feels like a sh- so she feels like a shadow. The same thing happened at, sis- at the other person's baptism. <laughs> All the conflict going down at the baptism. Yes. I feel so embarrassed of no, how is... self-important this makes me. No, sad. it's it's a, it's a missionary journal. <laughs> and really honestly, is. patriarchal culture. Women do like naturally are taught to compare yes. each other, and I imagine um. in a codependent companionship environment that could get very intense. Well, that you are spending every waking second <laughs> with <laughs> this person. Yes, especially because I, if I'm getting this right, this was right when she had first arrived to the mission, and I was training her. Mm. And this was at the end of my mission. So I know all the missionaries in the mission. I'm going back to an old mission area where I've, I know people. So mm. it's basically like if you're in high school and there's a new kid and the kid that's been there since element, you know, kindergarten. So anyways, I'm not, I hope it's not, your I sound so big headed. You don't, I'm very you embarrassed. Don't. You're um, a star. Anyways, it's frustrating for me because I'm honestly just trying to soak in all the happiness around me when she persists in being the black hole on my left. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. We all had one of those companions. <laughs> trust uh, me. But I don't know. How, but I don't know what to do. I'm just gonna. I'm not just gonna uh, join her in being depressed. So after we left, I was like, "Sister, so and so, are you okay?" And she was doing the whole silent, angry thing. And I just wanted to say, "Just be happy." But I knew that would not be the most effective way of dealing with the problem. 
So we went and sat in the chapel for 45 minutes while she cried and prayed. Aww. And I just read my scriptures. Aww. Sometimes it's hard to unconditionally love someone, but I'm getting a tiny bit better at it. I really do love sister so-and-so so much. And when she goes from happy and content to black cloud, mm. next page, uh, I just want to be like, what the heck? But I'm learning patience. I do this particular companion would also shut down a lot, and it was the beginning of her mission, so it's very difficult to transition into this new world. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like I was so used to it at that point, and she would kind of have these moments of being really mm -hmm. angry, and I wouldn't really know how to. She's deal not broken with it. in yet. Yeah, because mm -hmm. she hasn't uh, accepted her fate mm -hmm. <laughs> as a missionary. It's uh, interesting as well because you <clears throat> suffered with depression before your mission. Is that maybe like playing into it? Cause you've had to squash down presumably that to a degree in yourself. So yeah. then maybe it's m more like triggering to see. Yeah, I, I'm also, like telling her just be happy, which yeah. is not, you know, that's what I'm telling but myself you did too. recognize that that wasn't the most effective. Yeah, that's but true. It, I just think it's gotta be so hard to, as like as much as you want to be empathetic, having to like be that enmeshed and having to take on another person's emotions cause you're with them 24 seven. It's just really yeah. hard. It's hard enough to deal with your own emotions on the mission, let alone to feel like something good is happening. You're feeling happy and then you're yeah. being. Yeah, because these this this baptism and this other family that I talk about going like now that I remember who the family was, these were really big parts of my mission who mm. of people who I taught a lot or this family that was getting baptized, you know, all the kids and the aunts and the uncles. And it was very exciting. And so I'm at the end of my mission trying to just be like, look at these people I've brought the gospel to and she's angry at me the whole time. And she can't just be like, I need a second. She has to like stand next to me while everyone mm. else is like, sister Grenfell, we love you so much. Mm. We missed you. How's your new ward? And asking me all these questions. So it's hard when you're, you know, often in the, the missionary dynamic, I feel like, I don't know if this is the case for you, but there's one talkative one and one really quiet one that often happens where like one personality is kind yeah, of- Yeah, talkative one. Sometimes. Uh, eclipsing, especially at the end, I think the old, the one that's more experienced is the talkative one. So it's a whole dynamic and you are just with a stranger. You know, you're mm -hmm. with a complete stranger. And it is like senior, junior companion, right? Yes. Like there is yeah. a, an established hierarchy. So I would, I, I at this point was the senior companion and she was the junior companion. Yeah. And I think this is the, basically the end of my mission. So this is one of my last journals. Um, so anyways, I feel like that's, I sound very impatient with her. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. That. I wouldn't That's have been that nice at 22, you know. Uh, I'm a little yeah. petty to calling her a black hole, but um, but yeah, it was definitely super, that was a, a very difficult aspect of it, so. Yeah, I bet. Do you want me to keep reading? Do, do yeah. another little let's flip through. Let's do another yeah? random. Okay. Do you want it to pick a different day? Yeah, let's do another, there's a lot of like mixed media in this journal. Yeah, yeah. Stickers. <laughs> dear hello. Okay, dear hello. This is 2014, okay. So what a great last few days it has been, smiley face. Okay, I've got 10 minutes, so I'm gonna bullet point. First bullet point, we had president, mission president, farewell today. We kind of had one before, but this was just him going around in a circle saying goodbye and hugging everyone. I guess he was allowed to hug us. Uh, you hugged him? <coughs> yeah, oh. yeah. I guess I was gonna that ask, was the you get, one time. <laughs> did you get any physical touch on your missions? I feel like I've asked no. this before, but. Just Hugs. I mean, from girls, yeah, for other sister missionaries, you give hugs, mm -hmm. that's about it. And maybe if you're crying, they'll hug you a little longer. <laughs> and maybe if you have an intentional wet dream, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like a kind of touch deprived two years. I know. Oh it yeah, is. lots of depri deprivation. <laughs> 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 deprivation On many levels. Um, so it was so sad. He's been my mission president for the last year of my life, so it's hard to say goodbye. Uh, it seems that missions are all about goodbyes. Aw. Mm. Next, uh, I love mission president. We had an awesome lesson with two investigators today. We were teaching the second half of the plan of salvation and it felt like they were both really into it. The plan of salvation is what Mormons believe happens after you die. Uh, then we asked how they were feeling about all of it. Like baptism, this is a part member family. She's baptized, he is not. And reactivation, she was a little less active. And the woman who's the less active just burst into tears as she talked about her concerns with women in the priesthood, Ooh. blacks, black people, the pre black people in the priesthood and gay rights. Ooh. Ooh. We have zoomed in on an interesting I moment. Know. What's gonna happen in this entry? <laughs> uh, let's turn the page to find out. I wish I could have been like, what the heck? Unfortunately, <laughs> I only have 10 minutes, so we won't get a lot of detail. Uh, we, 
talked about women in the priesthood for the rest of the lesson. Okay, we did not talk about the other two things. (laughs) Just not gonna go there. Uh, And I got to share at the temple, which this is actually interesting. This is a point of view that I heard at the temple um, from this other member that is a very weaselly way of kind of, you know, working your way logically around women in the priesthood. Um, We told this investigator and her whole countenance changed. And she said, that's one of the most helpful things anyone has ever said to me. Wait, what was the most helpful thing? Do you want to hear? Oh. I, I almost don't want to say it because I don't want members to hear it and, and then go it? around <laughs> using <Tegaiko>. it. <laughs> I think at this point in the video, they've probably clicked oh, off. They prob- yeah. 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 probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're safe okay. uh, so the So what was said on my mission mm. is men and women are meant to be equal, right? So men get leadership positions and that makes them listen and it makes them compassionate and it makes them give blessings and it turns men? them <laughs> we're talking about men <laughs> <laughs> and it's supposed to make men have more innately feminine qualities of being a caretaker okay i'm listening we've got a yin yang situation <laughs> and women are child rearers and child bearers and chi- having a child makes you vicious and protective and powerful and brings life into the earth you know, and so it, it essentially gives you more masculine qualities. Okay, so the reason women are excluded from leadership roles <laughs> is so that both men and women in the church can integrate the masculine and feminine. Gorgeous. That yeah. is really good. Although it would never be kosher to <laughs> consciously integrate your masculine or feminine in any other <laughs> regard, right? No, 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 like no, you don't no. want to be no, like never wearing be dresses effeminate. as a, a masculine person or... Yeah, it doesn't... It, it's a very surface level way of saying like, <laughs> well, God gives us both the things that make us equal. Mm. But sure. then if you, you know, just like many analogies that are meant to make you feel better, if you dig a little bit beneath the surface, you're like, this isn't really withstanding scrutiny, uh, especially because it's true. A lot of bishops aren't just, and men in leadership aren't like, yeah, un- I don't unendingly think compassionate. <laughs> and you know, some, I, I had some bishops who are, but a lot of them are just power trippy and like love to tell you what to do and love to tell you to change the color of your shirt or wear a longer skirt. So uh, it's, you know, anyways, that was, so that was what made, what totally changed her perspective. She's still active actually now. Wow. So it's uh, been a good I lesson. Her masculine is so integrated. <laughs> oh yeah. That's I do wish I would have um, had something about the other two issues. Those didn't, gay rights those and were, black people in the priesthood. I think you covered it all with that analogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, She's like, like, I feel better yeah. about all of it. What would each of you say to people who are watching this who are considering going on an LDS mission? Because we do get people in our comment section that are, uh, right. you know, like teenagers who are, whose parents are really pushing for them to go. Any advice, any words of wisdom? My question would be, why are you going? And what do you hope to get from it? Uh, I think, you know, I think one common defense of a mission even for those who have left the church is that you learn a lot and you grow a lot if that's why you're going i would ask are there not other ways to learn and grow that don't involve sharing a gospel that is fundamentally false and homophobic and sexist and racist why not join another organization you know if you're looking for growth there are many ways to grow um my other piece of advice would be, uh, you know, if you're if you're going to go for yourself, why? If you're going to go for your parents, is it worth it? You know, uh, because I think those who are going for their parents, when you get back, are you going to also <clears throat> get married in the temple? Are you going to baptize your kids in the church? Are you going to wear garments for the rest of your life? Are you going to pay the rest of your life 10% income to the church? Because mm. if you stay on the path, does it end? you're going to have to get off eventually if you don't believe. Mm-hmm. why not just get off now before you've given two years of your life uh, and break away now, do the pain now? Because the longer you prolong it, the further in you are, the more painful it gets. So I don't know. That's a, yeah. my word jumble. That No, that was really good. Amen. Like check <laughs> out Habitat for Humanity, uh, the Peace, Peace Corps. Corps, like go get an education, spend it, go do to a university, year, travel, travel, backpacking, you know, humanitarian work go work on a farm like there's yeah. lots read of read the god delusion <laughs> <laughs> yeah there are so many ways to it, it, i really genuinely feel like my mission was such a waste um of my time of my energy of everything i wish i didn't do it but it is what it is now so you know 
just take it for what and it we is. We can laugh. Um, but yeah, I would have been much better served going somewhere as such a young person telling other people how to live was just terrible energy. It's terrible energy. You should go, this should be a time when you're like accumulating wisdom and knowledge and perspective, not going and trying to tell other people. So like, I wish I had just gone with a learner's spirit rather than a teacher spirit and just like experienced other cultures and, and learned other languages and met people with different backgrounds but in a like loving, accepting and curious way, rather than uh, trying to at every point maneuver them into like doing what I wanted them to do, which was get baptized in my church so that I could be a good missionary, so that I could get my name in the newsletter, so I could go home and be like, I was such a good missionary because look at my baptisms. You know, like not and, that it was, and and not that that was where my heart was as a missionary of like, ooh, I'm doing it to be seen at people, but like, that kind of is what it is. Like I didn't, I, as a missionary, fully converted, fully believing was like, I don't feel like people really need this. I feel like people need education. And true compassion. <laughs> like yeah. I would feel so, it was so awful to me to have someone cry, just cry breaking down about the death of a child, breaking down about financial hardship. And all I could think about was how am I gonna bring up Joseph Smith? How am I going to start teaching the first lesson? Literally. How am I going to get to mm. baptism? How am I going to ask them if I can pray with them so I can begin teaching the first lesson? And it robs you of hum your ability to experience humanity when you just have one goal, which is to baptize. Mm. And that comes at the cost of even hearing pe what people are going through. You know, had I just gone for a year and a half and just sat with people and talked with people and hugged people and mourn with those who mourn and truly comfort those who com stand in need of comfort, I could at least walk away from it saying like, I, I truly brought goodness to so many people's lives. But instead, any time that someone would tell me something hard or difficult, it was just, how can I use this to pivot into teaching the missionary lessons? Because that is expressly what you're taught to do. Yeah. Hello. So when people are like, oh, the mission was so good for me. I learned so many important <clears throat> lessons, developed myself so personally. It's like, yeah, okay, if you're going to go into sales for the rest of your life, maybe the Mormon mission is a good, a good way to, you know, get a drink from the fire hose just right off the bat in that field. And that, it's like, wait, so your mission was about you then? Yeah. <laughs> Right? Because when people <laughs> defend their mission, it's like, well, I learned so much. It's like, well, good for fucking you. How about all the people who you erroneously led into a false teaching? Yeah. Are they, I guess we're just throwing them out with the bathwater because you're, what you're saying is the reason it mattered was because of you. Mm. That's And those selfishness. people are now giving 10% of their income to this organization forever, potentially. Yeah, yeah. To say the least of it. And who broke ties with their family so that they could get baptized and who mm. gave up, you know, I had people who stopped talking to their family be to get baptized, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. So I, d I, I introduced that into their lives. Yep. That sucks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and some of the people I introduced to the church that had a horrible, horrible time in it. And I just, I'm like, Someone whoops, like, sorry. We got a comment the other day that was basically like, how do you, um, it wasn't like being accusatory in any way, but basically like, how do you forgive yourself now knowing that you like taught people a false, potentially really harmful thing for two years? I, yeah, I don't, I don't know that it's like, I'm not, to me, I'm like, you were a victim. Of yeah, this, yeah. So you got nothing like, to Yeah, do. I mean, I've heard people say that being a missionary is a little bit like low key human trafficking. Yeah. Because you're. They take your passport. They don't take yeah, a 17 a year old because you're not an adult yet. But as yeah. soon as you're a legal adult and you can't, they can't, you you're know. You're consenting. You're consent, you're but at you're a consenting a child. age. And you're still living with your parents. You're still mm -hmm. totally under the influence of the, the parental like experience you've had growing yeah. up as a child. Bam, gone for two years. Like. Yeah. And then once you're on the roller coaster, it's very hard to get off. Yeah. Oof. So mm. I like have made peace with my Mormon experience. And for the most part, I'm like, you know, all road, all the road has led me to where I am now. And I love my life now. Wouldn't change a thing. And so therefore I'm like, because I love my life now, I wouldn't change anything in the past. And you guys have here, probably so deconverted many more people <laughs> than you yeah. converted. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Look at the fire HD content that is now. <laughs> yeah, you are. This is your makeup for the HD content is fire. But it, it's it was like the mission is something that if I think about it too long, I'll get like really angry because of just the way that I was manipulated and for how bad of an experience it was for so much of the time. Even though during it, I was like, this was the best thing ever, best 
best two years. The best two years. <laughs> yeah. Inside, I was just dying. <laughs> and so, and like, how I feel like the term that you hear all the time on missions is forget yourself and go to work. Uh-huh. How manipulative. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That anytime you raise any concern, the response will be, elder, sister, forget yourself and go to work. Yep. And it's like, disassociate so hard that you forget you exist. <laughs> Dissociate for Jesus. And just spend all your time hmm. drinking as much Kool-Aid <laughs> as you possibly can. And at a certain point, you'll stop having an identity past what you're doing. Mm. I was going to also mention that video that's been going around, which it's of a tr- local church leader, but he's like almost word for word parroting uh, Elder Bednar of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, where he says, uh, young men, you do not have a, you know, the, you, you don't have a choice to go on a mission. Yes, we believe in agency, but when you got baptized at eight years old, you <laughs> promised to give your life to Jesus. Therefore, you no longer have free agency. You have moral agency, which means you have to do what we tell you because you made a choice at eight that we also pressured you into. Like, mm. it is so manipulative, so coercive. I just yeah, there's a lot can't of language. speak out against it negatively enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like there's a, one of the talks that really got to me was, I think it's Elder Oaks, I forget who it was, um, but he says, like, if you don't have a testimony, then lean on mine. And he's basically, he's like, for those of you weak in the faith, if you don't have a testimony of the Book of Mormon, and he like gets all, oh, then lean on mine. And he says it with the jowl shaking. And it, like, as a member, I was like, okay, like, I. <laughs> If I ever doubt the Book of Mormon, I'm going to remember this moment Mm because I lean on, like, I trust this man I've never Mm -hmm. met who's just an old dude that's in his 80s and speaking with a booming voice. I totally believe him over myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that type of talking, which is like, don't trust yourself, explicitly don't trust yourself. Lean on my testimony. If you don't, you don't actually need a testimony because I have one. That's, that's, that's so manipulative. Yeah. Or you, you don't even need promised. a testimony because you already got one. You were born you in the church, this. therefore you know it's true. So you don't really need to have you're, confirmation. You're born in the covenant. You. Yeah. And then if you get a revelation, like say you're going to Italy, it's like, Ooh, well, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't read the terms and conditions. Yeah, on that sorry, one. <laughs> not valid. Wow, what a video. What a video. Thank you for having me. Yeah, that, this is it's so, so nice. great to meet you guys. I I should share when I was first leaving. I there is a, a particular. It's like a. It's a poem that you wrote, Tanner. That keeps coming uh, up lately. I yeah, I keep that. mentioning it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, my husband play, played that for me. I think he was the one that found it. So he, we played it together in the car on a Sunday, and we were just sitting in the car listening, and it made me cry because mm. I, if I remember, it's like, why didn't I know this about Joseph Smith? Why didn't I know this? And it was like right in the midst of when we were deep in this like we're going to betray our families and leave the church experience. And so thank you. Like, Mm. you know, and now here I am doing the same thing Mm -hmm. and very much inspired by the work that you've both done, you know? So it's like meeting my, you know, I'm I'm fangirling a little bit. I've been acting really calm, but I am fangirling. We we are but humble peasants compared (laughs) to your like, you are like a goddess of X Woman, YouTube, TikTok, everything. Rising right now. star. Yeah. Thank you for having us. We're old lights. <laughs> we've we died been out doing a this years for ago. so long. You just pop up a year ago, and now you're just like you own the genre. Oh my god. So well, well done. I uh, whenever I can't think of what to say or do, I just am like, let me go to Zelf and get some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> so we all, we, and that's the great thing. I think that's so cool. It's like we're all kind of doing, you know. We all have the same yeah. goal, which is to dissuade anyone from staying <laughs> Going church. on a mission. Just to burn down the church of Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's nice that people can kind of find different, like, people they resonate with. To sort yeah. Of, it's all the same. I don't know. Yeah. We're all going for the same thing. It's funny that even if you don't have the intention of burning down the church or whatever, just talking about your yeah. experience negatively is seen as, like, apostate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is like, you're not allowed to have bad or mixed Being feelings honest. about your... That's one of the rules that we didn't get to is it's, it's against the rules to share negative experiences with your oh, family. Yeah. So when you write home, you just have to be like, I'm having the best weekend. Yeah. Miracles yeah. left and right. You can't mm-hmm. confide. You can't say the members are yelling at each other or like, I don't have enough food to eat because that's <sighs> negative, right? Mm-hmm. So they, they, ex- they just literally tell you don't talk about negative things. Cannot be overstated how much the Mormon mission is just classic brainwashing at every single mm. level and mm. regular mormonism is already like so much yeah. brainwashing 
It's happening. The cult within the cult. Yeah. Yep, truly. Well, thank you so much yeah. for sharing Thanks. your experiences, Thanks. coming on the show. It was so easy to like just chat with you and yeah. yeah thank you. Yeah. You're a delight. You. And just as beautiful in person oh. as on the internet, <laughs> which <laughs> as are fun. you both. Actually more. Oh. <laughs> Bernie's from the tribe of Judah, as <laughs> you can tell. A lion. I know. I feel like that story you have to understand so much context. No, people are gonna have to like that's not a TikTok video. No, no, like, no, no, no. You really have to explain what what's going on. Be pretty immersed in the backstory. I, was on that, like, mission. I, was like, Aww, I lied in the You did it. You did a lie. It wasn't and that's why fault. you wound up here. If you only had mm. I'm an Ephraim rising, Manasseh Moon, <laughs> Judah. Great, thanks for yep, watching. Members it. of God's Army, we love you. <laughs> should, we, should we sign off with a secret handshake? <gasps> well, we have we ever done secret handshakes on the channel? I don't even know him because I Well, you're about to be introduced. Um, teach me anything. Starting. So, t pinky, okay. Uh, point your finger on, on my, your. Oh, yep. wait. So, pointer on my. Oh, oh. thank you for having me. Yeah, on. you are welcome. <laughs> and thanks for reminding me of this. It's gonna come in useful someday. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just when a you're free when you're trying to get through the. Yeah, take out to the bank. Yeah, or like you're in distress and you need to like recruit some masons to help you real or quick. Or when you need to cast out. Oh, Yep. Oop. Uh, you shouldn't have been wearing that anyway. Sweet. All right, thanks Go for watching. follow Alyssa. You guys already all follow Alyssa. I bet. Also, support us on Patreon. Yeah. We're reading Tennis Shoes Among the Nephites there. Uh, we'll have a new episode dropping in a few days. Hey, yeah. love you. Love you. Bye. Bye.